So, Gerald, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. Uh, always a great pleasure to be uh, part of the independent Indeed. republic. Indeed. Indeed. Listen, and I'm one of the lone voices out there telling people to stop panicking, uh, you know, pull your trousers up and stop being so leading defensive about everything you know i agree uh, with people who say that uh, perhaps the budget on friday um was the catalyst for what has happened since then but the, but the budget is not to blame for interest rates going up the budget is not to blame uh, for the bond market failing the budget is not to blame for people's house prices and mortgages going up that is all due to the market and that is the market forces that we encourage to operate on their own i think the banks have been a disgrace i think the money markets have been a disgrace people have been profiteering off of other people's misery and we are where we are what do you make of it Yes, I do think that it's important to have a sense of perspective, and you're absolutely right. This uh, cost of living crisis has not been generated by policies emanating from Her Majesty's government, correction, His Majesty's government. Uh, the current difficulties that we face basically down to two men on the face of this planet. One sits in Beijing, the other sits in Moscow. Yes. COVID-19 has massively disrupted world trade, and as everybody has seen, not only has the energy supply been disrupted by uh, Putin's uh, uh, invasion of Ukraine, but also their exports of uh, wheat and other foodstuffs, particularly to the third world. This is what has caused the problem. So fuel prices affect everything that we do, because not only do we drive our cars and put the fuel in, but also the goods that we buy in the supermarket mm. are delivered by lorries, which, of course, use fuel. So fuel is a major factor in driving inflation. And the energy crisis has been caused by one man, and that is Putin. And that is why he has to be removed from Ukraine as soon as possible. Yes. So would you favour even more intervention then militarily rather than what we're doing currently? I would. I think that our action has actually been... Uh, more successful than I thought it was going to be. I understand that uh, British forces have trained 35,000 Ukrainians, and of course we have shipped a lot of uh, material, uh, weapons uh, to Ukraine to help them. And on the other side of the equation, of course, we have seen the total incompetence of the Russian forces as well. And we see now queues at the borders uh, of Russia mm. uh, to try to get out so that the young men are not uh, recruited or indeed forced to go to the front line uh, to fight a war which they don't believe yeah. in. And that indeed um, is seemingly happening even as we speak. But let's talk about the effects, generally speaking, because the problem here, it seems to me, Sir Gerald, is that there are innocent victims uh, of this crisis, as there always are, and they happen to be people who are trying to buy property, people who are trying to sell property, and people who are living currently in properties that they may not, in the next few months, be able to afford to pay the mortgages on. Yes, obviously this is a, a, a very great difficulty uh, indeed. But I do think it's important to steady the nerves. And unfortunately, all we've seen, particularly from the BBC, uh, not just now, but for the past three years, a just endless diet of uh, negativity. Mm. And the whole COVID uh, business was just negative, negative, negative. Yeah. And this has had an adverse effect on the mental well-being of the nation generally. And at the moment, I think it is a question of steadying the nerves. Uh, markets can be very volatile. Yeah. Um, it wasn't very long ago that the FTSE was up at 7,600, 7, and it's down to 7,000 no. now. Uh, and that's where it was actually, I believe, in March earlier this year. Yeah. So I do think it's a question of, of getting it right. And I do think it's also important to say that um, if we had maintained the policy of uh, uh, Chancellor Sunak, who is to say whether that was going to deliver or not? Because we were about to see a very substantial increase in national insurance, an increase in taxation. Uh, and a lot of my friends in business said, Gerald, this is not a conservative government. Mm. But all of Boris's uh, well-known uh, uh, traits, and I think that John Rental was quite right about that, which is why I defended him, because I couldn't see an obvious alternative. But there are risks in what we're doing now, but there were also would have been risks in continuing the policy uh, that had previously yeah. applied. This policy is designed specifically to encourage growth, to encourage enterprise, to encourage inward investment. If it achieves that, big if, but if it achieves that, we could well see 
and a resurgence of interest in the United Kingdom yeah. as the place to invest. Yes. And interest rates, let's face it, are going up all over the place. I mean, the reason for the volatility uh, in the currency markets at the moment is because of the interest rates being raised by the Federal Reserve in America, right? And that was entirely due uh, to a decision made by the Biden administration that that's what they wanted to do to protect their inflationary spiral. Now we've got Japanese um, uh, measures being put in to stop the yen from falling against the dollar. The euro has performed miserably against the dollar, but none of the sort of, you know, so-called portents of doom in this country talk about that. They don't talk about the fact that in all European countries, stocks are down in the same way that they are here. It's a global problem, and I get that. And Liz Truss perhaps does not issue um, confidence because maybe she's just new in the job, but you've got to give her a bit of time. She's only been in the job, what, not even a month yet, right? Uh, and so... She has got massive problems, but I firmly believe that we probably needed some kind of correction in the housing market because houses and property had become way too expensive. The interest rates were artificially low for far too long. Um, and perhaps when we come out of this in the new year, it might be difficult until then, you know, we'll be a better economy. Well, let's hope so. But I must say, I just cannot see the purpose in putting up interest rates uh, now because that will drive... So severe problems in the housing market. It will uh, undoubtedly cool the housing market, and you rightly say that that, uh, that needs to be done. Um, but it will drive up uh, massively uh, costs to, to homeowners. And it, it is predicated on a belief that, that inflation is domestically inspired. It is not domestically inspired. Mm. It is the product of these two problems, COVID-19 disrupting the whole of world trade disrupting the supply chain. And of course, what we need now to do is to make sure we buy British. I turn over every product. If it's made in China, it goes back on the shelf, unless I'm absolutely desperate. Um, but the other problem is Ukraine. And it is absolutely vital. This is in our interest. It is not just a problem for Ukraine. We are signatories. John Major signed the Budapest Memorandum of the 5th of December 1995, under which Britain, America and Russia, then under Yeltsin, agreed in return for Ukraine giving up its entire arsenal of nu nuclear weapons, its borders, then existing, sovereignty and independence would be respected. We have a duty, and if we fail, if we allow Putin again for the third time to act with impunity, where next? Well, this is it. And everyone in Europe calls uh, inflation Putinflation because, in fact, it is entirely down to Putin that the inflationary spiral has happened. What do you make, just very quickly, um, finally, um, Sir Gerald, about the um, fourth leak that's now been revealed on the Nord Stream pipeline? Russia's denying that they sabotaged it. What do you make of that? Well, it's very interesting. The uh, first point I would make to your viewers, uh, Mike, is that you cannot believe a word that any Russian leader or Russian official says. They lie through their teeth. Yeah. So in denying that they were responsible for these leaks, I think we have to dismiss that. I mean, you could be a conspiracy theorist and say that it was the Americans because by causing these leaks and rendering these uh, pipelines useless, uh, it would remove from uh, European nations uh, any desire to compromise with Russia because they've now got nothing to lose. There's no oil to import. Mm. Not entirely true because there are two other pipelines, Yamal and Soyuz, through which oil can be imported uh, into Germany. Uh, but they have already reduced their reliance on uh, Russian gas. 27% uh, of, uh, of German, the German energy market is, is gas and 55% of that was before 24th of February supplied by Russia. But just one other point is worth mentioning. It reinforces what you were just saying, that this is not simply a British problem. The fact is that German factories have closed because of the energy crisis. It hasn't here. And I do welcome the fact this government has been really decisive. They decided at long last, after 20 years of no strategy on, on energy, they have decided to go ahead with Sizewell C here in Suffolk, for I'm speaking to you from Bury St Edmunds, in the heart of Suffolk, They've decided to go with uh, a new nuclear plant at Sizewell C. Absolutely right. Uh, and uh, the government is also right uh, to reopen North Sea oil and gas. We have been obsessed with this green agenda. Uh, and if the, the green agenda closes down our, our, our factories, uh, nobody's going to thank them for that. We need security of supply 
whilst we develop renewables and other forms of energy. But the base load will not be provided by wind power because when there's no wind, there's no power. So it has to be when there's no sun, there's no solar power. It has to be provided by something else, which in my view should be nuclear.